cross-platform versus native mobile development. If you're new to the mobile development space, it may be hard to figure out which one of these avenues you should pursue. So in today's video, I wanna help clear that up a bit and give you my perspective on the two. A little background about me, if you don't know, I've been a mobile developer since 2016, primarily focusing on native Android, but I'm no stranger to cross-platform mobile development as I've been working full-time on a React Native project for the last six months. I've also dabbled with Flutter, Xamarin, and Cordova in the past, all of which are cross-platform Framework. So the way that I see it, this question can really be broken down into three different categories. Number one, native versus cross-platform as a career choice working for a company as a salaried employee. Number two, native versus cross-platform as a career choice working as a freelancer. And number three, native versus cross-platform as a business choice. If at any point you want to skip around in this video, don't be shy. Timestamps are in the description. All right, so let's dive into the first one native versus cross-platform as a career choice working for a company as a salaried employee. When choosing to learn cross-platform versus native mobile development, there are really two things you should consider if you want a career working as a salaried employee. And that is number one, the amount of opportunity out there. And number two, the type of company that you want to work for. In terms of opportunity out there, there are plenty of job openings for both cross-platform and native mobile devs. Especially in this new remote culture, it shouldn't be hard to find opportunities for either. But if if you scroll through cross-platform job postings, you may notice that they are mostly small companies, which isn't a big deal. Working for a small company, companies with less than a thousand employees, is just as rewarding as working for a big tech company. But I think it's important to understand why the cross-platform option is more prominent for the smaller companies, and it mostly boils down to cutting corners on cost. Maintaining two development teams and working on two different platforms can be expensive. With cross-platform management sees this as a way to cut their development time in half, effectively cutting the cost to develop their app in half. Now, I wouldn't say it two times is your development speed because you do run into cross-platform specific issues that you need to resolve, but in the grand scheme of things, maybe it does 1.5 or if I'm being generous, 1.75 uh, times the development speed to develop an app. So yes, either way, in the end, it does speed up development time. Now, if you're familiar with the project management triangle, usually choosing the fast plus cheap option tends to lead to sacrificing a bit of quality. And in this case, the quality that you're sacrificing using cross-platform is usually related to performance. Cross-platform apps will usually run slower due to the nature of how they're transformed into native components but not as slow as you may think. Let's say building a native mobile app, you will have 100% the best performance possible. Using React Native or Flutter will get you about 90 to, if I'm being generous, 95% of the way there to the point where performance is negligible in most cases. Now, why is this important for your tech career? Because the companies that care about that extra five to 10 performance gains tend to be larger companies like big tech or big medical companies that have money to throw around. Companies that can choose the high quality plus fast option on the project management triangle. And companies with this kind of budget also have the budget to hire top tier native mobile developers to squeeze out that extra five to 10%. So if your dream is to work at one of these top tier companies, make sure you realize that before you box yourself into this cross-platform only specific career path. Also, I think it's important to mention that once you really learn native mobile development, you'll have no problem jumping into a cross-platform technology. For me, the ramp up time into React Native was very minimal. I think it took me maybe a month to get comfortable. Anyway, smaller companies that don't have the budget to support native mobile apps may not have the budget to pay you that top tier tech salary that you're hoping for. But again, take that with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, having a top tier tech salary may not be your biggest goal in life. There's nothing wrong working for smaller companies. I work for a smaller company and I am extremely happy with my career. Also remember when you're getting paid that top tier tech salary, you are expected to perform at that top tier tech salary. All right, so let's dive into the cross-platform versus native option as a freelancer. Freelancing can be a really tricky road to navigate, but if you do it right, it can really pay off. Now, I do want to preface this with I haven't done much freelance work in the past other than working a few side gigs for 30 days on Upwork. So please take my advice with a grain of salt. Now, if I were to go down the freelancer path, I wouldn't want to limit myself to only learning one technology. The more technologies you limit yourself to, the less opportunity you have available. Now, again, if you get really good at, let's say, 
native Android development or super good at native iOS development, if your work is very high quality, I doubt people will have any issue hiring you. Anyways, my progress learning Android and then iOS and then cross-platform went a little something like this. It took me about a year to really get comfortable with native Android development. After that first year, not only did I learn a lot about Android, I learned a lot about programming and I also learned a lot about just mobile development in general. Because I had this solid foundation of mobile development already built up by learning Android, it really only took me a handful of months to get comfortable with iOS. And because I already knew native Android and iOS and I had a good amount of programming experience under me, it only took me about a month or so to really ramp up into React Native. But with that being said, a lot of your freelance gigs are probably going to be cross-platform. Let's take a look at the Upwork platform here, which may not be the best for gauging freelance work, but let's just take a look. When you do a search for mobile, the amount of React Native freelance gigs you see compared to the native gigs is significantly higher. Remember how I said cross-platform is typically used as a cost-saving measure for a lot of companies? Well, people who are looking for freelance work on platforms such as Upwork probably don't have the budget to support uh, native mobile developers, which could be why cross-platform gigs are significantly higher on platforms like this. And even outside of this platform, I'm willing to bet a majority of freelance work out there is looking for uh, cross-platform mobile developers. Now to sprinkle my own anecdotal evidence into the mix, I did an experiment where I took on freelancing on Upwork for 30 days. Anyways, I only offered native Android and native iOS services because I had no cross-platform experience at the time, but I did have to really scour Upwork for hours to find the gigs that I did. I remember most job postings and most of the companies that I applied to were looking for a cross-platform native mobile developer, specifically React Native. And I had to pass up on a lot of opportunity because I didn't have that cross-platform experience. It does feel like React Native is the dominant player in this cross-platform freelance market. But again, I really don't think you should limit yourself to cross-platform only as a mobile freelancer because if you do look hard enough, there are native opportunities out there and you don't want to eliminate that subset of the market. Market. Now, even though I don't fully recommend it, if you do go straight into cross-platform, I think building a small foundation of native mobile development is necessary. You don't need to spend months learning these native platforms, but you should generally understand how Gradle and CocoaPods work, how activities work in Android, and how view controllers work in iOS, how navigation works in both. Get familiar with Android material design and the iOS human interface design standards, and how the JavaScript bridge transforms JS code into native components. This is more specific to React Native, but any cross-platform tool you use, you should understand how the native uh, components are being made. All right, so let's dive into the final path, which is native versus cross-platform as a business choice. Let's say you're of the entrepreneurial type. You have an app idea that you want to build and you have little to no financial backing. 85% of the time, you're probably just going to want to choose cross-platform. In this case, time to market is probably very important and you will absolutely save a lot of time by just doing cross-platform. Unless you really want to build the cream of the crop, the Usain Bolt among apps. Cross-platform is the way to go, especially for MVP, in my opinion. And once your app does blow up and you start making a lot of dough, maybe those extra five to 10% of performance gains that you get using native, maybe those will be important to you now and you can explore that option. Then. Now I say you want to choose cross-platform 85% of the time, and that's just an arbitrary number, but there are those cases where you definitely don't want to choose cross-platform. Most apps are of the CRUD type, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. Your app probably takes in some data from a web server. It displays that data to a user. The user can interact with that data and upload data of their own. This is basically what a CRUD app is. These are apps like social media apps, media players, drawing apps, voice chat apps, restaurant apps, so on and so forth. In the case of a standard CRUD app, cross-platform, at least in my opinion, but there are those cases where native capabilities and performance are extremely important. Let's say you wanna design an app for elderly people that connects to a Bluetooth device that you created that monitors their vitals. As soon as their vitals drop below a certain point, you notify their emergency contact or maybe an ambulance, kinda of like a life alert, but a mobile app, if that makes sense. Anyways, do you wanna make this app using Flutter? Probably not, because this is one of those cases where performance and optimization is extremely extremely important. Now, this is just one scenario. Unfortunately, I can't give all the scenarios in which you wouldn't want to use cross-platform, but a good rule of thumb is if it deviates from the standard CRUD app, um, maybe you want to integrate with 
uh, augmented reality or virtual reality, something like that, it is definitely worth researching if cross-platform is the best way to go for your app. And lastly, let's say you don't have a bunch of money, but you do have the time to really uh, craft your app and you wanna make 100% the best app right out of the gate, then I would say it is worth exploring. Uh, native. All right, so hopefully that gave you a good perspective on what to choose. Good luck on navigating your mobile development journey. Don't be afraid to reach out to me via my email or drop a comment below. Anyways, thank you so much for making it this far. If you got value out of the video, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.